It's an old relic from a past time that no longer exists. It needs to be torn down completely so we can start anew. The tall statue sitting atop Georgia Avenue recently became the dividing color line for many in North Augusta, South Carolina. It honors Thomas Mackey Merriweather, the sole white man killed in South Carolina's bloodiest race riot, the Hamburg Massacre of 1876. While it has been a fixture in the city for more than a century, the argument now is that all men killed, Merriweather and seven black men, should be honored. But what is Hamburg? Historians will argue those killed for it and the city itself are things you should know. You have this gap, this period of long period of time for the, where the people in South Carolina lived. For 108 years, a town called Hamburg bordered the Savannah River near Augusta. And back then, it was the prime of Edgefield County with steamboats and trains moving the all-time favorite southern product, cotton. Before Hamburg's story ended, the town, built with the help of slaves, eventually was run by those same people once held captive. Their leadership reached the South Carolina General Assembly, and by the Reconstruction era, four African-American men worked to create Aiken County, an idea conceived from Hamburg's finest. If you have three South Carolina state uh, representatives living in Hamburg, Two of the founders of Aiken County, Samuel Lee and Prince Rivers, lived in Hamburg. So you had this political concentration of power, state power, in this little town. But let's go back to the beginning, before African Americans made up Hamburg's leadership and overall population. The year was 1813, and German immigrant Henry Schultz and Lewis Cooper began work to build a toll bridge across the Savannah River, connecting Augusta to the South Carolina border. Mr. Schultz was a, an entrepreneur, uh, and him being from Europe, he realized that he knew how to build bridges. Ads went out in the local paper, wanted to hire for the ensuing year 40 or 50 good Negro fellows. The labor harvested trees and built the Schultz Cooper Bridge, a toll bridge at the current location of the 5th Street Bridge. There was fees for pigs, cows, carts, people. Uh, in five years, it raised about $85,000. But the success was short-lived. But the bridge got foreclosed on, and out of spite, Henry Schultz decided that he was going to create a town on the South Carolina side of the river, right, a, right where the, uh, the bridge was. And so in 1821, he created Hamburg. It's hard to see now, but Hamburg, which sat along the Savannah River in parts of Augusta Concrete Block Company and River North Subdivision, sprung up overnight with homes filled with white families who ran businesses there too. Now a fierce competitor for Augusta in the marketplace, Hamburg used the inland port to ship cotton, tobacco, and other products to Charleston and European merchants. At the same time, a railroad was created, starting in Charleston and ending right in Hamburg. People that had cotton coming from South Carolina, uh, they would, could drop their cotton off with the cotton brokers in, in Hamburg rather than carrying it all the way over to Augusta across the toll bridge and it became a very lucrative uh, town. For years, Hamburg served as an economic engine hauling cotton and passengers too, the longest railroad in America at that time. But in 1851, Schultz died. And by that time, Hamburg began to decline, becoming a ghost town. During the Civil War, there was a significant economic downturn, despite slaves being sold in the town and a large number of Confederate troops quartered there. And after the war, historian Wayne O'Brien says a new Hamburg emerged with former slaves now self-sufficient enough to run their own city. So they were able to come back into a town and say, uh, these are shacks, but I can just build them back up because I was building the master's house. You know, whatever it took for uh, uh, planting crops, we were the ones doing it. 
And a lot of times they were the ones taking them to market, you know, the trade, so they learned how to barter and all these types of things. Armed with the right to vote from the 13th Amendment, South Carolina saw its first majority black state legislature in U.S. history. And with it, prominent men born in slavery running Hamburg. Prince Rivers, a Hamburg judge. Samuel Lee, the first black speaker of the South Carolina House of Representatives. And John Gardner, the town's mayor. They created a new constitution, which integrated schools, but all of that clout came to a screeching halt at the end of Reconstruction, just as America celebrated its centennial. July 4, 1876, Hamburg's African Americans rejoiced too, with a militia marching in town. Two white men demanded they move, and from there a legal battle turned into hundreds of white men surrounding an old armory, looking for black men to kill. Grabbed him, put him in a circle, took him over a hill, shot him, grabbed somebody else, took him over a hill, shot him. I, I mean, the testimony of Harry Mays just blows my mind. Three U.S. senators made their way to Hamburg to get the facts and uncover stories from witnesses such as Harry Mays about the execution-style killings of black men. Mays' words were, the first man they killed was Attaway. Attaway says, gentlemen, I am not prepared for death. Will you allow me to prepare to meet my God? Some of the white men said, I don't care. We are going to kill you. They called for Dave Phillips. I heard the guns fire and they came back, but Dave didn't come. Then they came back and called Pompey Curry. And when they called his name, he took off running and he was shot. He, they shot him in his leg, but he survived and he was able to tell the story and tell those who were involved. And Minister Frederick Morton says he's the great great grandson of Curry and through family history and research he uncovered his ancestors life in Hamburg, one that thrived and left a legacy after surviving the massacre in his 40s. His wife's father had bought about 33 acres of land out uh, Five Knots Road area and that's where I grew up. We still have that property in the family and they did well. Uh, they, uh, some were farmers. My dad farmed and did some painting and butchering. Um, and we have people in the family who've gone on. Uh, some are Montfort Point Marines. Some are Tuskegee Airmen. A little more than a decade after the Hamburg massacre, the flood of 1888 destroyed homes, washed away the railroads and bridge. Subsequent floods destroyed even more until Hamburg ended in 1929 as the country battled the Great Depression. But a few loyal citizens relocated to the Barton Road area of what is now North Augusta, bringing some materials with them to a new town called Carsville. The Young Men's Society building and parts of First Providence Church made it too. All key stumping grounds for Clara Lambach, whose parents were part of that transition. There were very, very few people living in Carsville at the time. They had a very small house in Carsville. In fact, the house that they first lived in is the same location as the house that we have now. Lambach's parents, Nelson Wingfield and Tessie Scott Goodwin, were born in the Schultz Hill area. But Lambach says they didn't talk much about life in Hamburg. A silence O'Brien says many blacks had, fearing talking would lead to danger. But one thing Lambach did learn was the value of an education, something that started in the society building that still stands today. They left, uh, I would say, a good roadmap for us to follow, not only in education, but also in church work. My father was the first superintendent when they built the education building at First Providence. And it's that history that North Augusta hopes to capture in the newly designated African American Heritage District. We want to do uh, you know, some jazz festivals and things like that, since it'll be a historic district. We want to do some African American arts festivals and things like that in this area. And inside the society building, made from wood that traveled from Hamburg, are hopes for a museum that will draw people to North Augusta from other places. Efforts made by historic North Augusta and a small group of investors are working to rehab the place and tell its story. They've added markers in what used to be Hamburg, 
so that all will know about the bustling railroad and the city that thrived at its time, and a marker for all men, both white and black, killed in the Hamburg incident July 4th through the 9th, 1876. Alan Attaway, Jim Cook, Thomas Merriweather, Albert Minyard, Nelder Parker, Moses Parks, David Phillips, and Hampton Stevens. We are all together a part of the fabric of this community. All of us.